Hey everybody, good morning. Good Thursday morning to you. I hope you all are doing well this morning. It turned out to be a gorgeous day today. Uh, did you hear all of that rain and the, see the lightning and hear the thunder last night? But today, hopefully it's going to be a beautiful day. Adrian, good morning to you. Hope you're doing great this morning. Uh, you know, this is Holy Thursday. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Stacy. I want to remind you that our church is doing a live stream of our Holy Thursday service, and I hope you'll be a part of it. There's Olivia, and she'll be there singing. Give us a, a highlight of it, Olivia, if you can share something. Let us know what uh, to look forward to tonight. Hey, Marcy. Good morning, Kelly. Uh, so don't forget that service today at tonight at 7 o'clock live stream, and then our Good Friday service is at uh, seven o'clock tomorrow night. Um, so hope you'll join in for that. Good morning, Cameron. You might do a reminder about what's going to happen for children on Easter Sunday. We have sent out those links, that information, and I hope that you will let your kids be a part of that. Good morning, Leslie. Um, and then our services, we have a seven o'clock Sunday morning service. It's a sunrise service that will be live streamed and then our regular 930 service. Y'all, we are having a great response to our live streaming. It has been phenomenal. I hope you all are participating and, and watching that either live on this, uh, Sunday mornings or sometime later in, in the day. Um, so, Please do. I hope that you will check all of those out. Well, let me check in first of all and see how your week has been. So give me some thumbs up on that if it's going pretty well and put a comment there in the box and say, oh, we have had a terrific week or we are struggling. I need help. I need out of here, <laughs> whatever the truth is. For you so please give me some comments there we're going to be talking about consequences today maybe we can give you some suggestions um, and I think uh, Haley said she had to head out to work and so I think she can't be with us oh wait what did she say here uh, oh yeah she'll have to stop watching in the middle of it and Cameron says she has sent something and uh, let her know if you need anything um, Okay, Olivia is sharing that uh, Holy Thursday will be an opportunity for reflection. There's going to be a mix of scripture reading and songs uh, that lead us uh, through the moments before Jesus was arrested. So tune in for that. Our team has done a terrific job of putting all of these services together. And if you get a chance, let them know how much you appreciate that. I think that would be a wonderful thing to do to, to offer your, your support. All right, so let's get started on our consequences. Um, and we've been studying correction for the last few weeks. We've talked about using our words and making our words uh, really important and, and so that the children will obey the words so that you don't have to go to actions. That doesn't always work. Um, Kelly's needing help with procedures like laundry and she's running in circles getting uh, nothing done. Yeah, so that needs to be built in somehow to the schedule of expectations. Let's see if we can have some consequences for that. Um, we'll look today at maybe some ways that you can plug that in. Um, and then we looked at having the child take a break, and that means that they have to be isolated even more. And so they are isolated until they settle down. That's the point, the purpose of isolation. It's not a punishment in itself. It's till they settle down so that you can come back together and resolve whatever crisis they were dealing with. And now today we're going to, to look at consequences. I uh, introduced it last week. If you didn't see that, it's important to go back and see what the purpose of consequences is because it's still in this category of discipline, which means teaching your children. Uh, you're sending a message when you're giving consequences and it says, hey, whatever you are doing right now is not working and you're not gonna live your life that way and this is not going to continue to happen and here is the result. So well, let's look at the toolbox of consequences. The first one is natural consequences. Uh, these are corrections from life. 
They just play out naturally. And natural consequences can be your friend if you handle them carefully. Now here's how it looks. So you tell your child not to play roughly with the, the cat, for example. And the child plays roughly with the cat. And then what does the cat do? Well, the cat uh, go, it scratches or, or gets aggressive or, or it, 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 the cat reacts to the rough play. And so it scares the child or this child is hurt and cries a little bit or, or whatever. That's a natural consequence. Um, let's say that you tell your son not to run because if he does, he might fall and then he runs and he falls. That's a natural consequence of behavior. So you, you want to look for those opportunities that will just fall into place and will be the consequence. And when that is the consequence, you may not need to go further than that uh, unless it's something that is of a real serious nature and you have to go to the next step. Now, here's what sometimes happens with natural consequences. We side on the, the side of the consequence instead of on the side of the child. So let me tell you how that sounds. If the child has done something they know they're not supposed to do and they do it and then they have to deal with the consequence, what do you often say to them? Go ahead, comment, let me know. What do you say to them when they are roughhousing and they are acting up and you say, somebody's going to get hurt? <laughs> Rebecca, you've had that going on in your house, skinned knees, and so you've told both of the boys, don't run. If you run, somebody's gonna get hurt. Or if you run, uh, if you rough house, you're going to hurt somebody and you're gonna be crying. What is a natural consequence? They, they get hurt, and then what do you say? Rebecca, bingo, that's why I told you to walk. I told you that was gonna happen. Uh, I knew you never listened to me, and so then we become a, a, a on the side of the consequence. So we need to handle it careful instead of going into the I told you so. And so we side with uh, the child by showing some empathy. I'm so sorry, I know that hurts. Let me see what has happened. And then you go into the reminder. And, and then Rebecca was exactly right. That's why I said we need to walk. Because, and, and so then you have the learning opportunity and the child comes back with parroting that. The, the, really get the child to come back and say to you what he did, what happened, and what he's going to do next time. Did you get that? Make sure the child comes back and says, all right, this is what I did. As a result of it, this is what happened, and this is what I'm going to do next time. So those three things, that, and this is for anybody, any age, uh, and the, uh, <laughs> Haley's had a glued forehead and a soft palate injury from natural consequences this week. You know, uh, they, th that's something you can go back to. Uh, oh, I don't know which child it was, Haley, but uh, then you go back to it. Remember what happened to Jack when? We want to be careful not to. Why do we want to be careful? Because of what happened to Jack. You use those incidences to build on for the future. All right, so that is an example of, of it. Now, here's one that I hear about all the time. I used to have to deal with this with uh, my sons, one more so with another. And Kelly's saying, I struggle with allowing that uh, consequences that are more serious. Y yes, when it is a serious thing, you have to go a different route. We're gonna look at some of those uh, later. We're gonna look at logical consequences, and then we're going to look at removing privileges. And so it, you have to know when it's just enough to deal with the natural consequences. And so um, here's one that I hear all the time, and it's uh, the child has left the homework at school. And so, okay, don't you wish for those days. Don't you just wish you had an opportunity for the child to leave the homework at school because it means he wouldn't be at school and not there in your in your ho in your home. Uh, so, but that is this is one I hear all the time. What do you do when the child has left something really important that you, you know you might need to get to him or her? So, what do you do? And here is my answer. 
it depends. <laughs> it depends on what you are trying to teach. What does the child need to learn at this moment? So on the one hand, you can be teaching the child uh, not to be careless and, and you're trying to teach not to be forgetful. And so conse natural consequences need to apply. Uh, not to be forgetful. It's the hardest thing. It is so hard to let that one fall into place. On the other hand, families are supposed to be this wonderful safe place that uh, help, uh, we bail each other out of our problems and our situations. And if this is a rare occurrence, well, I would take the homework to the school. Um, now, you might have a conversation when the child gets home and something might happen as a result of it when the child gets home. But that's one of those, it depends on what you are trying to teach your child. So there's not one just flat answer for that, like, no, never take the homework to the child, or I'm gonna always take the homework to the child, because neither one of those fits. It just depends on the situation and what you are trying to teach the child. Uh, now, be careful not to misuse natural consequences. For example, when a child is actually failing at something and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a real struggle for the child, for, for example, the child is actually failing a class and, and so there are all kinds of circumstances I and mean, you don't wanna just fall prey to natural consequences and then it's, I told you so and, and you'll just have to suffer the consequences of that and, and you'll just have to repeat that grade or repeat that course or, or whatever, we don't want to do that. So if a child is really in jeopardy of failing something, then natural consequences don't apply. But here is what applies and that is more parental control more parental control. That means more parental involvement. That means spending more time. Something is, is going on there. And so you need to spend more time coaching or supervising the study time. Uh, Cameron has said, especially older children, empathy makes a difference when pointing out natural uh, consequences. Instead of saying, I told you so, uh, I'm really sorry for you and I hate it. Uh, when you get to, in too big of a hurry, and that's exactly the kind of response we want to do. Empathy, and I'm so sorry when this happens, and it's what happens as a result of. That. See, that's a way to slide in uh, the cause of it without saying, I told you so. And so empathy goes a really long way. Uh, so it may not be the end of the story, and that's where Kelly was concerned, uh, that, that just having a natural consequence is just good enough. It depends on what it is, but it can be your friend if you use it carefully as a lead in to the lesson, as a lead in to uh, the explanation of consequences, as a lead in to the next step what I want us to caution not to do is the I told you so. Uh, I want us to look at, oh, this is what happens when we, and then or when you. And so let's look at how to do this better. And then you decide if there is going to be a loss of privilege, if there's gonna be a logical consequence, um, if there's going to need to be more parental control or if there's going to be another avenue to go. All right, so uh, any more questions on natural consequences? Uh, put those up there right now before we go to logical consequences. And as you're posting those, uh, I want to remind you of what happened to Peter. When Peter uh, saw Jesus out in, in the water and, and Peter said, hey, just, I just, just ask me to come to you and I'll come to you in the water. And so Jesus, so Peter stepped in the water and he began to walk toward Jesus. And so he was, he was exemplifying faith when he was doing that. He had faith in Jesus because he kept his eye on Jesus. And then when he took his eye off Jesus, then what happened to Peter? He fell in the water. And that was a natural consequence that Jesus let play out. And he let it play out that Peter fell right into the water. 
And then what did, did, did Jesus didn't say, "Oh, big boy, I told you not to do that." I told he he went, you know what he did. <clears throat> Peter was flailing around in the water, and Jesus helped him to get into the boat. See, he did a course correction. Use that as you're in your memory about how to deal with natural consequences. And so Haley said, what about if your child lies to you about silly little things, but you're trying to teach him the importance of telling the truth? Okay, so that's not really gonna fall under a, a natural consequence. <clears throat> I think that's gonna come under the category of values and what's really important morally. And even though they're silly things, that, that's not gonna have a natural consequence. It won't, well, maybe it, it would if you said something that was a silly lie and then something happened and it could be some kind of natural consequence, but that is a value. And so then we stop and we teach the value uh, that in our family, it's really important to tell the truth, even when things are silly. And I would probably do some role play and I would probably do, um, and I'm not sure which child it is and how old this child is, Haley, but um, I, I would call out things that would be silly little things and then I'd call out important things and they have to identify what, what they are. And, and so I, I would be teaching them that it's important to always be honest and truthful. Okay, and then coupled with that, is the child actually lying or is the child trying to have some kind of fun and poking fun and, and being silly as sometimes uh, parents, parents do also with children. And you're not really telling lies, but you're just kind of playing with them. So I would try to discern what's going on. But if they're lying about silly things and they may call them silly, maybe, I don't know if you give me an example, but it might be, oh, um, there, there is, uh, there's somebody ringing our doorbell or there's somebody in the front yard there and there's nobody there and it's something silly and it's caused you to go and you go and look and it's disrupted you and that's a silly little thing, but there's something underlying that and the child wants some kind of attention for something. So we have to figure out what that is. So this is Ollie. He's asking, uh, let's see, her, uh, asking him to throw his banana peel in the trash. He then throws it under the couch. Okay, and I say, Ollie, did you throw it in the trash? And he says, yes, and then you pull. Okay, so that, I say, that is truly a lie. That is truly a lie. That's not one of the, that, so I wouldn't call that a silly little thing. That is a lie. And so that's where we begin to teach Ollie the difference between truth and lie. Uh, I would probably go into some consequences. There's not a natural consequence for that. Um, there could be a logical one and it could be a loss of privilege. So let's get through those two categories and see if you can uh, d discern the difference, but uh, he's probably going to have to do um, either a loss of a privilege, but I have another one I'm saving for the end and hope we get to that today. If not, we'll get to it next week, but it has to do with adding something on. You add something on and it, you, you add it on that's kind of connected to logical consequences in that Ollie may be doing a lot with bananas. <laughs> he may be doing a lot <laughs> with bananas. He may be having to make uh, banana pudding. He may have to take uh, banana peels and, uh, from everybody in the family and put them somewhere. He, he, he may have to learn a lesson that gets extended a little bit. Um, and so you can get really creative with it uh, without um, being too punitive at this point but you don't want him to develop that pattern of, of lying. And so uh, let's, let's listen to the other areas and see if any of those fit. Um, okay, and so, okay, here's Kelly says, yeah, you ask if they brush their teeth and they said, yes, well, you smell the breath and you know that they didn't. That's another one of those, that natural consequences are not going to work for that. You're gonna have others, and the logical may be for that one too, because logical, um, examples are like the punishment fits the crime. So we're going to go right into that punishment fits the crime. And so then, um, I don't know if it was William or Sweet Baby James, but uh, probably Sweet Baby James uh, said he brushed and he didn't. And so Sweet Baby James might be brushing his teeth a lot. He might be brushing them uh, maybe every 30 minutes. 
Um, maybe every hour, uh, maybe every time you ring a bell, he may be brushing his teeth because you're, you're trying to get it to the point, here's what you did, that is not good. So a logical consequence is gonna be connected to the brushing of the teeth. How does that sound? Hey, lots of y'all have joined today. Oh, this is a good day. So glad to see all of you. Alicia, you're there, and I saw uh, Anna, Ashley, that's awesome. Uh, mommy brushes baby James' teeth because he cannot be trusted. <laughs> All right, baby James is big enough to do it. So uh, if he's the one that's telling the lie, uh, then um, he needs to be brushing his teeth probably a lot. I'd use that, that, I'd use either the bell system. Whenever he hears the bell, he has to stop whatever he's doing. He has to go brush his teeth. And this will happen until he learns, until he learns. And then he learns two things. The importance of brushing his teeth, number one, and th there are consequences when you lie. So I, I would use those under logical consequences and then adding something to it. Now, so back to natural consequences, they can be a great uh, teacher, but they do not work when people or property are in danger and when they take too long to be effective. So th in that case, we're gonna go to another realm and that's going to be either logical or, or taking away some kind of privilege. Um, okay, Kelly's got a great idea with the laundry. You're going to apply that to the laundry. Oh, yes. If they're not doing that laundry right, and listen, a lot of you are having trouble with that because we've talked about that in the last couple of weeks, getting the laundry done. It may be that you're going to ring a bell every time you need that laundry until they learn that when to take it and where to put it, that you're, you're going to have it. It's at high noon, 12 o'clock, it's laundry time. Everybody stops what they're doing and you go and you get it. Uh, and then it's four o'clock, time for the favorite TV show or when they're supposed to be doing something not fun and they're playing a game or they're, they're go, planning to go outside. But at four o'clock, we're doing laundry until they learn to do it. And this can go on and on until the lesson is learned. Uh, so uh, give that a try and then let me know how that works. All right, so logical consequences involve creating discipline related to the misbehavior. So let's use some examples. Say, so you have two boys, uh, little Ricky and little Tommy, and they are digging holes in the front yard with a shovel and they are damaging the lawn. So dad stops them and he has, he, he has them fix what they've done so they have to correct the damage that they've done and then daddy institutes a new lawn procedure and they begin to help dad <clears throat> rake the leaves or they help to pick the weeds. It's connected to what the misbehavior was. All right, here's another example. Little Amy, sweet little Amy keeps leaving her favorite coat at the gym. Well, she needs the coat, and so mom can't say, well, I'll take your coat away, but maybe she takes the favorite coat away, and so maybe she can't wear the favorite coat for a while, or maybe, and, or, or, or maybe um, you, you practice something else with the coat. The coat has to go here. It has to go there. She has something that she has to do that's connected with the coat. Um, every kid has a favorite one. And so I would take that, the favorite has to be put away. The favorite goes into what we would consider time out and then the other, and it can't come back until there is a, a reasonable amount of time that has passed to see if she is going to remember what to do. Now, I wouldn't make her put on something that's ugly or that's going to be embarrassing. I wouldn't do that. That's, that's never a, a good idea for them. All right, so uh, let me ask you how, how you handle this. Does anybody have a door slammer? Anybody in your home that wants to slam that door when he doesn't get his way or she doesn't get his way? Now, you all know the answer to this. What is a logical consequence for that. All right, y'all give me a post on that. And in the meantime, Julie Murphy from North Carolina is joining us. Hey, Julie, it's good to see you. Uh, miss you. Uh, she was a faithful member of our group for a long time, and then she moved away. All right, what do y'all do when you have a child who uh, wants to slam the doors? This would be, this is a great example of doing a logical consequence. And listen, it's hard. Okay, and so Olivia says at a certain point you say try again. And so I, I would institute that would probably be the the first 
step of this is they slam it one time and you say, oh, oh, come back here, Jude. We're gonna try this again. And then Cameron, who has older sons, uh, who may have done this a time or two, I don't know, I can't imagine, but uh, the door comes off the hinges. You see, that's a logical consequence. So you can go for everywhere from, um, oh, we're gonna try that again. And then Marcy said, remove the door hinges. Uh, so you can, you start with, hey, let's do that again, because this is, doors are important in our home and we pay a lot of money for doors. And so Leslie says, my parents set a timer and made me practice open and close the door nicely for 15 minutes or more. I absolutely love that. <laughs> that is a perfect logical consequence. Okay, you can practice it. See, that's one of the things we're gonna do. I'm gonna talk about that later. It's practice doing the right thing. And so there it is. So Leslie had to stand out there and open the door and close the door. Now, I don't know if anybody was watching when that was happening, but they were listening, I am sure. I <laughs> Leslie said, I didn't love it. <laughs> I can imagine not. Um, but I bet you would love it if you have to do it to one of your daughters as they get older. And so, you, so we go from, hey, let's try that again, uh, which is exactly where you start. And then we practice doing the right thing and then you can practice it for an extended time. And then if that doesn't work, uh, maybe the door needs painting if you trust a child to do that. Um, so <laughs> uh, try that. And then at a certain point, the door comes off the hinges. Now, the older the child gets, the more uh, impactful that's going to be. So Haley's come up with something for Ollie. Uh, maybe I'll make Ollie throw away the banana peel repeatedly for 15 minutes. <laughs> Yes, there you go for 15. Well, Ollie's, uh, maybe Ollie does it for 10, and this is how we do it. And maybe he goes from one one place in the house to the other and then picks it back up and he goes from from the point of the the incident, from where he was to the, to the garbage can. I love that. Uh, so I think that's a great way to do it. Okay, T uh, Julie says teenage daughters are definitely door slammers. Any of you, were you door slammers? <laughs> oh, Kelly has another great idea uh, for Haley. Cut that peel into 10 parts. Oh, that's a great one too, and you're teaching math. They have to be equal parts. You see how you can have a little fun with this. Now, don't make it too too. I mean, don't laugh about it too much because then it loses its impact. But yeah, put, have a stool, you pull up a stool, and if they're old enough to use knives, then they take that peel and they have to cut it into, you see, it, it, that means so much more than what we typically do, and that's either yell about it, or you, I, I've told you before, you can't do that, what are you thinking? Uh, and, and take the, the stress off of you. Uh, by doing a logical consequence and adding on something that would have practice. Um, so I love that. The goal of logical consequence rests partly on the parent's ability to empathize with the child once again. And here's how that sounds. Oh, I'm so sorry you chose to do that. See, I love that word chose. I, you chose to do that because now you're going to have to and then say, suffer the consequence or have some punishment or you're gonna feel some loss. And, and so you do it with the empathy first. Now, listen, mamas, it needs to be sincere. <laughs> you know, none of, none of that, you know, smug, sarcastic, oh, I hate it for you. Mm -mm. No, that's not what, what, what we need to do. Really, some, some empathy there. <coughs> Uh, Kelly has another good idea. He can throw it away 10 times and he has to count it out. Yeah, he has to count it out depending on the age of the child. So you make it whatever is appropriate for that age. Um, and Kelly's going to do it with the laundry. Oh, I cannot wait to hear how that works. You've got, got some washers and folders coming in your home. Love it. Please let us, oh, listen, if they don't fold it or, or practice the folding. Remember, we have to coach them. We have to teach them. So this is a lesson, first of all. It's first of all a lesson. You don't go straight to consequence. Go to lesson. And here's how it may sound with the laundry. Hey, guys, I, I realize that, that I've missed the boat here. 
I, I think we're not all on the same page here with laundry. We're just not all getting how to do the laundry. And so we're going to have a lesson on laundry. So see, do that, and st because here's how it can sound. I'm tired of the way you all are doing it. Nobody around here ever helps me, and Buster, that's ending today, and here's how we're going to do it. Do you see how that sounds so very different? It, you, you go, you back up a step, because truly something has not connected with the teaching of, of some of these things if they repeatedly don't do it and don't do it right. Because we've got, we've got several problems that could be here. For one of them could be they didn't obey. And what's the other thing they didn't do? Y'all know what it is. They didn't obey and they didn't honor you. And so we have to deal with that. Or did they just not get the lesson? So here, now we go back and we teach the lesson and then we do the practice of it over and over, whether it's brushing the teeth or whether it's doing the laundry. And then we instruct. Now, here's what, here's what the deal is here. This, when I say we need to do it at whatever, or by, after you get up or before you go to bed or before lunch or whenever, then that means you will obey me. And you ask them, when do you obey? And they have to say the first time. And then how do they do it? They do it kindly, nicely, whatever words you want to use, and that is honoring you. And then tell them that those words are important and when you say the laundry needs to be done, it needs to be done when you say it. And then again, you pick the right time. Don't, don't start picking times that, that you know are, are not the right times to have those things done and that it really is, it, it's gonna create a, a problem. So you, you have a responsibility for that too. So you say, Here, I've taught you how to do it. I'm using words to make this happen. And, and I want you to do it the right way and honor me. And if you don't, then we go from words to action. And see, that's what we're talking about here. The action part of the natural consequences or the logical consequences or the loss of privileges. Okay, so um, that's where we are. It's, it's 30 minutes. Wow, the time has passed so quickly. I try to keep this at 30 minutes. Um, and so next week, we're going to look at loss of privilege. And so before we get to that, oh, Laura Van Zandt, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in ages. And I'm, Laura, Laura was a, a mom in our group, and I miss you too. Um, and so uh, let's see, did somebody else have a, a comment or a question? All right, so we now then let's put this all together as you all are coming up with any comments or questions before we uh, leave the, the Facebook Live for today. Uh, so we started with uh, looking at correction in general and what is correction. And then we looked at, first of all, letting natural consequences play out as far as they could. And when that did not work, then we looked at putting logical consequences into place. The punishment fits the crime and adding on to that some, some kind of um, practice of whatever the infraction was. And when then it, it, that may have needed something else and that's what we're going to talk about next week and it's the loss of privilege. The point of all of these is to have a change of heart in the child. We want the attitude to be what it needs to be. And so that, that's what we're trying to do. That's what our whole goal and purpose is, is to have children with the right heart attitudes that God wants us all to have. Um, all right, so I'm going to close it because I, I want to, to uh, throw this out to you, uh, a scenario, and I want you to see what would be the consequence in this scenario? So uh, let's say that uh, you, your, your daughter knows how she is supposed to uh, polish her nails. And you have taught her that and that you've, you've taught her where to do this and how to do it because you don't want polish all over whatever, your furniture, your, your, your clothes or whatever. So you've, you've gone through that process. And so let's say you happen upon this scenario with your daughter. Your daughter is polishing her toenails on the edge of the bathtub. 
and as she's polishing, she accidentally knocks over the nail polish into the bathtub. And <laughs> a bright pink, almost red, splotches are all over the tub. When she reaches over to wipe off the polish, she bends her toes as she's reaching over who, that have just been polished. She was polishing her toes on the bathtub and the polish now gets onto the sheepskin rug that you had purchased in Australia. And when she puts her toes upright, there, are, there is no polish on her toes. It is on the sheepskin rug that you have purchased. What needs to happen? Please give me your comments right now. Can't wait to hear what you would like to do to her. Polish on the bathtub and polish on the rug. She is supposed to know better. Is this where natural consequences play out? Uh, do, do there need to be some logical consequences? Does, does there need to be some practice? Does there need to be some loss of privileges? Some kind of combination? Has this ever happened to you? What would you do? Anybody have an idea? We need to know how to deal with this daughter. What would you make her do? Not hearing from anybody. Uh-oh, they've gone away. Here we go. Um, what would you do? Well, I need to know because that daughter is yours truly. <laughs> okay, Kelly, you're saying logical and loss of privilege. Tell me, somebody punish me. <laughs> Give her the tools to clean it up. Research together how to get nail polish off of sheepskin rugs. Yes, please. Oh, allow her to be part of the solution. She's probably going to say it needs to be cleaned up. Oh, Alicia said, walk away first. She, she would clean it and maybe pay me back for the damage. Oh, she can save her money to have it professionally cleaned. No polish for you, Missy. Adrian said, I did, did a similar thing when I was younger. I got to learn for myself how to clean it. Oh, listen, y'all, I did that this morning. Oh, y'all, I did it. I got in too big of a hurry. Now, listen, I know what to do. I know I've, I've told... Uh, I've told Stella, I've told, you know, myself, uh, here's what we do and here's what we don't do. And I got in a big hurry and then <laughs> I, I'm, I have um, too much pride to show you my toes right now. But you would see that the, there is only that, you know, that residue of polish that looks like it was once there, but it's not there anymore. I did a hurry up cleanup of the bathtub and now I've got to go work on that beautiful sheepskin rug. But I, I need to go to timeout. Something needs to happen. And Kelly says, you can use that story as your empathy story <laughs> with your granddaughter. Yes! Thank you, Kelly. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. But I tell you all that because, see, we need to be careful because sometimes we make mistakes and we have to deal with the consequences of our decisions, the consequences of getting in too big of a hurry. And I would find those stories to tell to your children. So that's how you do empathy. Oh, Kelly, you, you wound it all up in such a beautiful way. That's the kind of story we use. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I miss you. I'm so glad so many of you tuned in. Uh, we'll get you up again next Thursday, and we were, we're going to look at loss of a privilege. Oh, yeah, Olivia, yes, I want to get pedicures. And listen, today's another big day because I have to soak these off. Oh, y'all, they look horrible. You see? You see? Uh, that's got to get soaked off today. Uh, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how that go that uh, goes. Rebecca, looks like you're gonna need to go to timeout too. Uh huh. You every time. Mm -mm, mm -mm, there's a problem there. <laughs> See you all next week.